Good afternoon, this is Joe Esquivel, and we are getting started. I'm just following up to make sure that everyone can see everything that I have on my screen and that everyone can hear me. So I have not seen anything in the text box that anyone cannot hear me, so we're gonna get started. As you know, part of what we do is presenting you with information. So what I'm going to go through today is showing you how to use this information. So the name of the webinar today is how to file your lawsuit. Many of you have questions as to what do I do? Joe, you sent me a lot of documents. I'm lost. Okay, well, part of what we do is preparing. However, part of what you need to do as a member and as the party that is filing the action is to do a little bit of educational research. You need to find out what county you are in, what court you need to go to, and you need to also have gone to the court and asked them for a copy of the rules pursuant to civil procedure. Rules of civil procedure pursuant to a pro se litigant filing an action. Because every state is different, every county is different. We do not always have the every single answer for you. One of the things that is first going to happen is that we are going to send you an email. Within this email is going to be a large number of documents. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed. All right. What you need to do is to download all of the documents into a folder, name it, and save it on your computer. All right. Copies of these documents, all right, as there are many different types, are as follows. Example. It can be a complaint with the TRO. It could be a civil cover sheet. There could be a proposed order. There could be a summons. All right, there will be exhibits. There will be label pages and documents pertaining to the exhibits. There will also be a document which is stated how to file your lawsuit. Many people are better suited for reading instructions. Other people are better at looking at a video. To give you an idea of what some of these look like, here is an example of a complaint. I am not sure how big your screen is, so I will just... I'm trying to give you an idea. Many people say, Joe, what does a complaint look like? Again, it depends on your particular situation. Are you on the offense? Or are you on the defense? If you're on the offense, you're going to file a complaint. Or, again, you can be on the defense and file a complaint. You can be filing a motion. A motion in opposition of their complaint. It does not matter what it is. Just understand that you're going to receive a lot of documents. All right? You may or not may or may not have a civil cover sheet. Again, depends on your particular situation. If you are down at the courthouse and they say, "Hi, Joe, you need to fill out this cover sheet." What I would ask that you do is not panic, not freak out. Take a copy of the cover sheet and sit down and look at it. It is not hard to fill out. All right. Again, we do not always know what documents are going to be ready. We have had counties where on the website, or online, it doesn't say that a civil cover sheet is needed. You show up and the clerk says, hi, Joe, where's your cover sheet? And now you panic because you're there and you're upset. Why didn't they tell me? 
Again, part of this research must be done by you calling up the clerk of the court and asking, what is it that I need that I don't have? This is an example of a civil cover sheet. Again, you need to just take your time and look at it. Compare it to what it is that you are filing. Understand it. It says here, attorney or party without attorney. Okay. What is, it, what is your name? What is the court that this is in? This is in Los Angeles County. What is the street address? Again, you need to look up this information depending on the county that you live in or the parish that you live in or the township that you live in. We don't always have this information. This is where I need due diligence on the member's part. This is not something that you just say, here, Joe, I need help with. What do I do? You need to educate yourself. There are tutorials out there, for example, of which you can partake in. There is a uh, CD out there called Jurisdictionary. I highly recommend it. It used to be on a four CD series. Now you can download it to your computer and listen to it. And it will walk you through all the rules of civil procedure in a generic format. Again, in here, this is civil cover sheet, all right? Is this $25,000 or less? Or does this case exceed 25,000? Oh, it exceeds 25,000. That's why there's a check mark there. Okay, all right, so again, is this a complex case designation? No, it doesn't say complex case here, no. So don't check it. Check one box below for the case type that best describes this case. Well, let's look in here. What does this say? It says here, plaintiff's complaint for wrongful foreclosure, breach of the implied covenant, breach of contract, slander of title, declaratory relief, and motion for temporary restraining order, and for injunctive relief. So let's just take a look at these cover sheets. Is this for auto? No. Personal injury? No. Other tort? Business, civil rights? No, none of this. Again, read what this says. Employment, no. Contract, breach of contract. All right, what does this say? Breach of contract, yes, let's check this. All right, so just go down. Check one that best describes. This would best describe this particular document that we are fighting. Okay, let's go over here. This case is or is not complex under Rule 3.400 of the California Rules. Okay, if the case is complex, mark the factors requiring exceptional jurisdiction management. Well, is there a large number of separately represented parties? Nope. Is this an extensive motion practice, raise difficult or novel issues? Nope. Is there a substantial amount of documentary evidence? Nope. Is there a large number of wins? Nope. All right, so this is not complex. Again, you need to just stop and think about what you're filling out. This is not rocket scientist information. We just need to apply just basic common sense. What is it we're doing? I have people that call me up screaming. I'm at the courthouse. I don't know what to do. All right, you need to calm down and go online and look at what you must do prior to you showing up in court. Call the clerk of the circuit court or the superior court or the district court. 
get a list of rules of civil procedure so you are not shocked when you show up. Oh, Joe, the summons that you gave me doesn't match the one they want me to file. Okay. Let's copy the information. All right. All right. Let's copy the information. Here are the plaintiffs. Mickey Mouse. All right. Donald Duck. Minnie Mouse. All right. So we need to take this information. All right. And then we need to put this into the summon sheet that they want you to use. Again, I understand many people are saying, Joe, why didn't you do this? Well, Joe does not have all of the answers for every case. Our job is to assist you, and we are to the best of our ability. So please understand that you need to step up to the bat and you need to take that swing yourself. I cannot bat for you. I would love to, but I cannot. So this is where you need to have an understanding of what is expected of you as well as what we are providing for you. Okay, so... What is the first thing we're going to do? Again, we're going to download the documents and attachments, save them to a folder for future reference, take a look at the documents. Is the name, spelling, and address correct? Well, let's look at the documents. And is this your name? Is this your address? Understand that Yes, we are human. Yes, we do make Scrivener errors. This is a Word document that you are going to sign and date and make your own. So if there are minor errors that need to be put in there, Joe, you place a A instead of a B for my name. Do me a favor. Don't call me up and tell me this. I am not an English major. Fix the word, all right, and then email me a copy after it is filed and say, Joe, here's the changes I made. Again, we need to have everybody stepping up to the plate and understanding that they need to learn this as well. When I started this, all right, I was in your shoes. I have been to court 13 times in front of the judge for my case when I got my debt discharge in 2010. I didn't have an attorney. I was a pro se litigant. So I have walked in your shoes. I understand. I did not have anyone at that time writing my motions. I was doing this. So yes, we are helping you. Again, I need help from each member that is going through this as well. So, if minor scrivener or spelling errors exist, please correct them as this is your document. We are only human and sometimes have a few errors. Now, understand, when we ask you to file the document, if there is nothing other than a scrivener error, all right, please file the document. If there is a mistake, we can amend the document. We have had too, too many members wait weeks before filing because they said they didn't understand it. Joe, the cover sheet wasn't correctly filled out. I need help from every member that is going to file their document to have an understanding that they must have an educational learning experience as well with this. You need to understand when you're in front of the judge what is going on with your case. You need to read it. You need to understand it. Because unless you have an attorney acting as a microphone on your behalf, you are the one that they are going to articulate the arguments to. And you must be prepared to back them up. So, again, just I need help in educating yourself as well as the filings. So, again, there's many different agreements, many different documents. All right. 
you need to then print out three copies of all documents. All right. Yes, this means all documents, everything. Some of the documents can include a grant deed, warranty deed, quick claim deed, note, deed of trust or mortgage, assignment of deed of trust or assignment of mortgage, pleading, summons, cover sheet, an order for a judge to sign, motion, pooling servicing agreements, circular supplements, trust agreements, exhibit label pages. On the exhibit label pages, I've had numerous phone calls where people freak out and say, Joe, I'm at my phone. I'm looking at these documents and they're blank pages. No, those exhibit label pages are not blank. They have one large letter in the middle of the page at the bottom of the sheet. So when you're looking at this, many people need to have an understanding that you need to understand what it is that you're looking at. The page looks blank. Oh my gosh, Joe, this is exhibit A. Well, there it is. It's at the very bottom of the page. So when you're going through your documents, look at them. I, I've gotten probably more than two dozen phone calls with members telling me that their exhibit label pages are blank. No, they're not blank. You have not scrolled down to the entire page. So it does not matter whether it's one or two. Again, all of these are all at the same place. They're all at the bottom. So just a little information. I've had people that ask me, Joe, I've got a pool and servicing agreement. Do I need to print out the whole thing? It has 300 pages. The answer to that is yes. I understand it has 300 pages. I read it. You need to print it out if that is what we are using as an exhibit. Well, why? Well, the reason is this. For example, if it's a prospectus, all of the information that we are using all right, is in here. The closing date. This is one of the governing documents. So, This is why we use it. Again, it could be a prospectus supplement. Um, it could be a trust agreement for Fannie Mae. It just depends on this particular situation. But this is, again, part of the documentation that you need. If it says print out all, print out all, with the exception of the inspection instruction sheet you only need one instruction sheet next now that I've printed out three copies what next well let's file your documents you will now go down in the courthouse file the documents at the courthouse you're going to take all three copies of the documents with you and get them file stamped at the courthouse one copy is for the court. Do not staple that copy because they are going to scan it into their system and they cannot scan in a stapled copy. One copy is for you, which you are going to put into a binder. And you may staple that if you want, or you can keep it in loose. It's up to you. The third copy is one that you are going to scan into your computer and you are going to print out copies of this one. If you have two defendants, all right, you're going to need two separate copies, one for each defendant. So you will scan a copy into your computer and save it because you need a filed copy with the case number and the stampings on it saved. And then you will print out a copy of that. So you now have a copy that they did at the court that they stamped, and you're going to print out another one if you need one, or if you need two. Depending on how you're going to serve the other parties, all right, would depend whether or not you need it emailed in a in a email format, meaning in a saved PDF copy, 
or if you're going to use a sheriff or a constable and you're going to need a hard copy to hand them. Okay, when you use a process server, as we have on the instruction sheet, many times this process server can have the documents that you had gotten stamped at the courts emailed to them. So that's something to look at. Many people don't like using process servers. Many people love using process servers. For me, I like using a process server. I know it will be done correctly. A process server is an officer of the court. This is the instruction sheet that you will receive. Again, it tells all the information we're going over now. At the bottom, Here's a suggestion for a national process server that I have personally used in my case. He deals with other process servers in other states. So if you are in California and you need to serve somebody in Texas, he will make sure that the correct documents get to where they need to go. He will call another process server up if he does not do it. Once they serve it, all right, then they're going to give you an affidavit of service. So one of the questions here is that now that I filed the complaint with the court, what next? Well, again, reiterate what we just went over. After filing your action with the court, you must now serve the opposing side with a copy of the complaint, motion, or answer, or whatever you file with the court. That means that every party that is named on the summons and in the complaint, answer, motion, is served. There we go. They have answered. What next? Everybody calls me. Joe, I just filed. What do I do next? What do I do next? All right. What you're going to do is you are going to wait for them to answer you. What you're going to do is to find out from the clerk of the court, because depending upon your state and county and court and type of document that you have filed will depend on how long the opposing party has before they need to answer. you need to then write on your calendar, if you serve them today, September 2nd, and they have 20 days in which to answer, all right, 20 days out from today, which would be September 22nd, all right, I would have on my calendar, all right, a question asking, have I been served? If I have not, if they, have not answered, I need to get ready and let U.S. Equity Initiative know that they are in default and they have not answered. When they answer you, whether it's 10 days after you file, 17 days after you file, 30 days, whenever it is, immediately inform us that you have received an answer and send us the documents so that we might prepare an answer for you. And then follow up with an email confirming that we have received your documents. Do not wait until two days before the scheduled deadline for your response to their response and say, Joe, um, I received this two weeks ago. Uh, it looks like I have till tomorrow to answer. What do I do? That is what we get from members not following up on their case. I cannot follow every case and have an understanding as to what date you filed exactly and what is the response date that they need to act on. I need you to step up to the plate and take some initiative and understand that it is your responsibility with this being your case that you need to have an understanding 
you need to know what date are they to answer by. And if they don't answer by that date, then we need to let U.S. Equity Initiative know and their lit support. So, reiterating, as soon as you get an answer back, please let us know immediately. Okay. Now, if you have any more questions, here's what I would ask you to do. Regarding your filing or any other one, put them in an email, create a ticket, and I will attempt to get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. I take phone calls all day long, and I cannot stress enough how much time it takes out of my day. I cannot answer every single phone call. I cannot answer every single email the day it is sent. So I ask you to give me some patience. If you have a fire that needs to be put out, that is different. All right. If you really have an issue that you need to call the office, then call the office and say, Lori, I have an emergency. But to call and say, what's going on with my case, Joe? I don't know. Well, what day did you file your case? What actions did the opposing party take? These are things that I need the members to step up and to take action on their case as well as U.S. Equity Initiative to take an action on their case. Because many times I hear, Joe, you didn't tell me this. Joe, you didn't tell me this. Joe, I didn't know I had to file all of those documents. That was 500 pages. I just spent $30 in copying. Well, my answer to that is what is your house worth? What is it, with, what is it worth to stay another day or another month in your house? This is not the time to be asking Joe, is there some way we can cut down on the number of documents that we are filing? The answer is no. The documents are that are required are the documents that are required, and I ask everyone to just follow the instructions. So with that, I believe we went through a large number of items. and. I'm going to stop recording this and I will take any questions and see if I can answer them. You can type the questions into the chat box. And if you need to be unmuted, if you put your name in the chat box, I will see if I can unmute you.